Uh, big event happening at the Zombie Hideout on Saturday, uh, 362 Cooley Street in Springfield. Kelly Packard, who was on so many wonderful episodes of uh, Baywatch and uh, California Dreams, wonderful actress, really delivered mm-hmm. their lines with great uh, conviction and, uh, and uh, emotion. Uh, anyway, she's going to be appearing there between noon to 3. You can meet her, you can greet her, and she'll sign stuff for you. May even co-sign a loan, for all I know. I remember her lines when, uh, you know, like uh, somebody was drowning in the ocean. Yeah. She would go, and then run out to the beach. Right. Yeah. Because that's what you have to do, and you need to save a life. And how many times uh, do you have to be reminded how many times to say, you're absolutely right about yeah, that, Steve. Yeah, right. yeah. Anyway, we have uh, we have tickets for that meet and greet. Uh, tenth caller right now at two nine three one zero two one. That's uh, that's very exciting. You start calling right now, and uh, and while that uh, while that is happening, we just happen to have uh, what? Kelly Packard on the what? phone with us. She's on oh, the yeah, phone. I know. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. How that happened? I don't know. Yeah, she's on the phone with us right now. It's uh, Kelly Packard. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. All seventy eight episodes you were on a Baywatch. Uh, no, I was on. Hold on, I can do this. I was yeah. on forty-five what? California Dreams. I did all seventy-eight. You know what? I reading the internet. Uh, they give me the information, <laughs> and now I sound like an idiot in front of Kelly. Pitt. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, no, we don't want to seem like liars to yeah. you, Kelly. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> it's okay. The Google is often wrong. Yeah, I guess it's unbelievable. So. But that, but but nevertheless, whether it's seventy or forty, that's a lot of episodes of uh, of one yes. show. Yes, yes. That, that, that and was... California was exactly seventy eight. So you might have just confused. Oh, I probably people. confused the numbers. That's <laughs> yeah, maybe that's, that's where I yeah, maybe wrong. that's it. Yeah, well, I apologize, Kelly. But that, that, being on okay. being on Baywatch, that that uh, I mean, to be part of such a culturally. Uh, popular uh, show must have been pretty cool at the time oh my gosh yes it would be you know now if i was on for example game of thrones right my favorite show of all time it would be like being on that now and i was i did not take that for granted in the moment because it was the number one show watched in the world and it was huge and i loved being a part of it See, I would have probably watched Game of Thrones more had some of the people in that show like run out of the ocean in red bikinis. I would have probably <laughs> been a little bit more engaged. <laughs> run run in, the, in that cold, freezing water, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, well, exactly, exactly. But you know what? But but Steve is right. I mean, when you when you think back to to that, uh, you know, it was it was a phenomenon. It wasn't just a TV show. It was like. Yeah. You know, everybody was talking about it, whether you watched it or not. Everybody was yeah. talking about that show, and talking about you know the the people who are in it, whether it's you know, David Hasselhoff or or Pamela Anderson or or you or or anybody else. To be kind of thrust into that phenomenon sphere, uh, yeah. You know, I mean, how do you even process that? I mean, it's like you you, you played April for years, and it's like. Yeah, how do you, how can you go anywhere in the world and not be recognized for for what you had done? <laughs> you know, it's quite interesting. Well, for two two things that I would like to add to that, I was very young too, so I think I had just turned twenty two when I got the part as April. So to be thrust, like you said, into a show of that magnitude at twenty two years old was a whole different ball game. Luckily, I had my head on my shoulders. I was actually already married. So I had a good foundation, but I watched a lot of people around me go through the same thing, and it was a whole different experience because you you literally couldn't go anywhere without being mobbed, and that was pretty much, you know, across the board, going anywhere in the world for that matter. And so it took a toll on a lot of people. Luckily, not as much me, but... um, I can see how it affected a lot of my friends, a lot of my castmates, and things like that. But then also, um, a, a secondary note to that was is I can go pretty much anywhere and not be recognized. So we're good. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough time has passed that people are yeah. like, wait, is that her? I can't tell, you know? <laughs> yeah, you kind of look like that one lady, but I can't be quite sure. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But, so but, now if I'm with other castmates, then they're like, "Oh, wait a minute," you know, and it all comes together. But if it's just myself, I'm pretty good. Well, <laughs> can you can you tell us a little bit about what the what the uh, auditioning process for that was like? Because I, I could imagine it was probably like 
a lot of people wanted to be part of the cast of that show. I mean, obviously, they didn't know what phenomenon it would become, but I'm sure when you say, yeah. hey, David Hasselhoff's uh, doing a show, uh, who wants to come out? <laughs> Right. So for me, my audition process was a little unique because I had already been on the show three times before I became a guest or a, a regular. Right. And my first guest spot was when I was 14 years old. So they knew me. They liked me. They remembered me. And I had gotten California Dreams. When I turned 17, I got California Dreams and I was doing that show when they called and asked if I wanted to come on and be a regular to essentially take Nicole Eggert's spot. And I couldn't get out of my contract with California Dreams, so that wasn't even an option. But then as soon as California Dreams ended, they called again and said, hey, we still want you. And so I auditioned, and my audition process is funny because I went in and I actually left the audition because when I walked in, everybody looked like Pamela Anderson. And I don't really look like Pamela Anderson. <laughs> at least at 22, I did, did not physically look like Pamela Anderson. So I freaked out and I left. And my best friend Jenny was with me and she says, no, you need to go back because you don't know. Maybe they want you. Maybe they don't want Pamela Anderson, blah, blah, blah. She gave me this pep talk. So I went back. And sure enough, I was the only one there that was for my part. All the other people were trying out for the new part that Carmen Electra ended up getting. And so had I not gone back, who knows? You know, who knows what would have happened? Well, you know, I mean, you, you, but, you, you said something that kind of, you know, you know, leaped down at me. And I'm, and I'm wondering, well, was, was, the, was the intention of this right or wrong? I mean, you said they, they noticed you at 14 years old for a show that really is about people who probably should be over 18 and and, yes. and and higher, I mean, was was that that sounds strange to me? It, or am I making more it, of it know, than I was? No, you're you're right. And looking back, I was definitely not like your average fourteen year old in terms of you know yeah I looked I looked good at fourteen I looked sexy. However, my first role was like the mean girl you know the mean teenager. So it wasn't a womanly role. But then the ones after that were so i they definitely went for that younger look there's no doubt about it and i think even pam was super young when she was cast um so they 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 knew what they were doing hiring the younger girls for sure you uh, you mentioned about how you know some of the cast mates you know did well under that kind of spotlight and, and others did not uh, i believe it was like mm-hmm. last year pamela had done this documentary series about her about her life and about you know being thrust into that into that spotlight and and there were good parts of it and 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 not so good parts of it Uh, when you when you talk about you people struggling under that uh, that scrutiny what do you think it was that separated the ones that did well with it as opposed to the ones that didn't do well with it it was about maturity or age or or what would it have been I can only really speak for, like, my experience, and I think the difference for me was I started acting when I was eight years old. So I had already experienced quite a bit about the business, about what it can bring. You know, California Dreams had its own popularity that when I was 17, I was going you know, to malls all over the United States and being mobbed. So I think I kind of had that under my belt where a lot of the characters, a lot of the people that came on to Baywatch, they were, they came from small town Canada and had not done anything, right? And so it was just, they didn't quite know how to handle all that pressure all at once. And I think I was lucky because I had essentially built up to that. I don't know. Hmm. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. And they were young and they were maybe not from the best family background, family units, maybe didn't have the support, Um, different variations. I'm thinking of like different cast members, you know, but it's like, who knows? For me, I think it helped that I had already experienced quite a bit. Uh, are you, you're almost suggesting that show business uh, might not be all fun and games like if everybody makes it sound. <laughs> you almost make it sound like an insensitive yeah. meat grinder. Um, did did you yeah. did, uh, getting more into like the technical aspect? Did they did you have to become like an actual certified lifeguard uh, in order to like learn the part? I mean, I don't know how well you were versed at swimming before you got there, but <laughs> you know, I'm, I just, I, I, yeah. I'm interested in little mundane things like that. That's actually a really good question because I don't get asked that very often. But, yes, they, the creator, Greg Bonan, was a lifeguard of 30 years, and he took it very seriously. Now, I think 
80, maybe 90 percent of the cast did not have any experience and did not take it as seriously. But when I got the part, I literally said, what should I be doing? What should I be doing to be ready physically for this job? And my producer told me I should be swimming 100 laps a day. Now, when I got the part, I could maybe swim two, maybe. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I took him seriously, and I got in the pool, and I worked my tail off. And by the time we started filming, I could swim comfortably 70 laps without without worrying about anything. Wow. So I worked really hard. Now, I know for a fact that a certain other cast member of mine that same year couldn't even swim. So she not only lied <laughs> about her experience, but her water work was very insignificant compared to mine because she hated swimming. She couldn't even swim. She was scared to death. You don't have to tell us who it is, but what does it rhyme with? Is it Armin <laughs> Belectra? Or is it... Yeah, uh, it rhymes with something, yeah, like, yeah. Amala <laughs> Panderson? <laughs> I mean, I believe Hasselhoff could save lives. I believe that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yes. Totally, totally and could. No, you're right, and actually Hassel did work really hard. So those of us that really wanted to be, we'll say, method actors, actually really tried to look like we knew what we were doing. Now, could I have saved someone in real life i'd like to think i could but i probably couldn't um but you know i tried i tried really hard you know what i saved my brother from the undertow in the atlantic ocean off the coast of new jersey one time and he's like thank you and i said i learned that off of baywatch hey <laughs> yeah, i love there you that go. oh that's so a heartwarming you know people actually yeah people actually used to say that to me fans yeah. would actually say i saved my little brother because of baywatch yeah. that mm. warmed my heart that's, that's a heartwarming story. It Steve. wasn't all about bathing suits, was it? No, it, was it really about wasn't. Saving lives. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be you're gonna be at the zombie hideout on uh, on Saturday from uh, noon until three. Uh, you know, meeting yeah. and green people, signing the uh, signing stuff like surfboards, towels, that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, you all set for that. You got to, is your hand yeah. not gonna be cramped or anything? <laughs> you know, I did when I did one of these conventions a few months ago. I did realize I'm like, ooh, hey, this is a lot of work. Am I, I'm tired, <laughs> but no, I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, I always have my burning celebrity question that I need to ask. What would Kelly okay. Packard bring to a potluck barbecue? What's the ooh, dish that you would I'm make that you'd bring to to the? I would definitely bring my homemade mac and cheese. Homemade oh, mac yeah. and now cheese. We're talking about you yeah. know what? I was yeah. thinking. I'm like Kelly's not one of them ambrosia type of people. Yeah, she's not a three bean <laughs> salad type of lady. Yeah, not not with the 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 the, the broccoli with the raisins and the carrots in it. I don't know who wants to bring that to a party, but those people. No, that's need, nonsense. They need to be disinvited next time they show up. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, it's great to talk to you. Uh, enjoy your time at uh, the Zombie Hideout on Cooley Street in Springfield. It'll be a great time. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. You bet. Thanks Thank you so very much. much. Kelly Packard, we're Have back. Have a good day. You too. Okay. We're back from Nagel on Rock 102.